Glad you're here this morning. If you have your Bibles open to 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17 this morning. As you look at the Word of God, appreciate you taking time to be with us and join us for the service, whether live or online. This day and age, we need church. But we just don't need church, we need God. Church is nothing without God. We are here to worship the Lord this morning. I thank you for singing so well. My heart as a pastor was encouraged as a Christian to sing with fellow Christians, and I appreciate you being here. A number of people visiting with us here today, and I'm glad you're here as well. I hope that this service will be a help and a blessing to you. If there's something that we can do uh, to be assistance, make sure you, you stop us and talk to us afterwards. 1 Samuel chapter 17, familiar passage of Scripture. Familiar story, you may not know 1 Samuel 17, but you know the story, most likely, of David and Goliath. Goliath was the biggest dude around. Goliath was the tallest guy around. Goliath, I would argue, was the strongest man around. I have heard countless sermons, stories, lessons, and illustrations on David and Goliath. I have preached a number of times on David and Goliath, but right now the series is fabulous stories from the first three kings. Saul, David, and Solomon. I can't, I can't, in good conscience, pass over the story of David and Goliath. I don't know the first time I heard about this story. I'm sure I was just a young child. It could have been at home in family devotions time, but it could have been at Sunday school as well or junior church. Seems like it's a go-to story. Young David, small David comes. Big Goliath threatens and, and scares. And young David, he argues his way, grabs five smooth stones, and he unleashes a stone at Goliath, just one stone. And God wrought the victory that day and knocked that big giant down. Who doesn't like the story of the small guy beating the big bully? In, in our current culture, there are countless movies where small underdog team takes on powerhouse sports team. And that small team, and you, you see the one game where they win, this team from a, a nowhere with nobody beats this other team that has never lost a game their entire, uh, since the foundation of that team, right? Funny, you never hear after that account, right? You know, like the, the, the following... 15 years this other team wins, but in that, in that, in that movie, the sports movie, you'll, you'll see the underdog, the David team, beat the Goliath team. What a powerful story. What a tremendous story. With our children, we would act it out, and somehow, I as dad got stuck being Goliath. No doubt because of my superior strength. Or maybe it was because they liked to watch me fall down, slain with a stone, and then go to chop off my head or something like that. Oh, Dad, you play Goliath again, we're going to be David. I never got to be David. Never got to be David. Here in this account, though, we have David and Goliath. I, I'm afraid, though, I fear that if we're not careful, because we are familiar with the story, we've at least heard it referenced in society or life, that we may miss what's really going on in this story. I want to illustrate some things today. I want to bring attention, and I've entitled my sermon this morning, When Your Giant Looks Too Big. You ever been in a place in life when the battle that comes, when the problem that comes, when the situation that comes just seems to be too big? Anybody with me and say, Pastor, I've been there before. I've been there before when the giant looks too big. I think if we're honest this morning, all of us could have our hand raised if we're honest. There are times, and it may be where you're at right now in life. It may be tomorrow. It may have been last week when your giant looks too big. We find in 1 Samuel chapter 17, beginning in verse number 1, Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shoka, which belongeth to Judah, and pitched between Shoka and Azekah in Ephas Damon. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah. And set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the other side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. Now look in verse 4 through 8 as we look at this morning, this giant. And there went out a champion. There went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines. 
There was a guy who was used to winning. He called him a champion. You know, we still use that word today for someone who wins. They won their champions or they won the championship. This guy, this guy who came out of the Philistines was a winner. He was used to winning. He was not used to losing. There went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath. I wonder, I wonder. Well, I don't wonder. I'm sure that when his parents named him, they had no idea he'd be in the Bible forever. Goliath of Gath, probably because of the story, Goliath, it's just, it just kind of rolls off your tongue, Goliath. It sounds nasty, Goliath. Oh, look at this sweet baby, Goliath. You don't, you don't, you don't name things that way. Look at that sweet butterfly, I'm going to call it Goliath. No, 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 no. I don't think Goliath wore pink. It was Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. We'll come back to that in just a minute. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. And a staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. And his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron. And one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said to them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. And if you be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Lord, I thank you for this time we have. Lord, I pray you would guide our thoughts and our hearts. Lord, help me as I speak to bring those things that will be helpful. And Lord, those things that are true to your word. Lord, I don't know all the needs this morning, but you do. Lord, you know the giants that are in our minds, in our lives, real or imagined. And Lord, I pray that this morning you would show us something about yourself. You would reveal us, Lord, the power that you have, that you possess, that you make available to us. Lord, may our hearts be convicted and stirred and encouraged. And Lord, I pray if there's someone here this morning who doesn't know you as their Savior, they would trust you today. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. When your giant looks too big. If you look at verse 4, this Goliath of Gath, this huge butterfly, if I may, the Bible says was six cubits and a span. Now, we don't really use cubits as a measurement these days too much. You don't say to a young person, well, you grew this summer. How much did you grow? I grew a cubit. We say, well, what does that mean? You don't go to measure your woodwork in your house and listen, I'm going to put in some trim in my house and I need, I need three cubits worth. The, the, the helper at Home Depot will look at you and say, huh? You got a tape measure? Because my tape measure measures in inches and feet, not in cubits. But we know from some biblical data from back then, from some other sources, from some scholars and experts, that this six cubits in a span would be a roughly nine feet, six inches tall. There is no one in this room that is nine foot six. But I wish there was. Can you imagine the basketball team with a couple of nine foot six inch players? Can you imagine the volleyball team with some girls who are nine foot six inches tall? Can you imagine those who went to paint something? Listen, you can paint this room and not use a ladder very much at all, nine foot six inches tall. And if we're not careful, if we're not cautious, we'll redo this account and we'll miss the fact of how big Goliath actually was. I want to help us with that this morning. Well, the Colbins, if you come over here, I have over here a poster. He's going to put down for us. We can all watch and make him very embarrassed. This poster right here is a life-size height of Goliath. This poster is a 10-foot poster, and Goliath in the poster is 9 feet 6 inches tall. Go ahead, Brother Colbins, drop it down. 
Thank you. That's Goliath right there. Now, for comparison, Mr. Nathan Coots, a senior this year, he come up here? You're up there. Come on, give me a hand. Nathan's a strong boy, fast boy, a great soccer player, friend of mine. Senior, Lord willing, going to graduate this year. Nathan, are you 17? 17 years old. David could have been 15, 18? Just to, oh, we forgot your birthday. That's all right. Nathan and I are roughly the same height, right? Okay. Would you go stand by Goliath? Right next to him. See, even from your seat, he doesn't look that big, does he? But after church, I encourage you to come up here and take a picture with Goliath. Hey, Goliath, he's a big dude. You're like waist level with him, Nathan. His arms are the size of your neck or bigger in this thing. I don't know if his shoulders were bigger or smaller, but that is nine foot six. Now, I think his helmet would have, been, would have been even taller, but he was one big dude. You could probably grab his, his knee, Nathan, and take him down. Can you imagine if he walked into this morning in full array of battle and began to shout and scream in the voice that would have been there? He's huge. Thanks, Nathan. Let me see you. Thanks. You did a great job. For sure you graduate. <laughs> Nine foot six. That's a big dude. It's a big giant. Does your giant ever look too big? You see, our giants today, they're not named Goliath. They're named things like this. Mortgage. Recession. COVID. Arthritis. Cancer. Drug addiction. Violence. Jobless. Unemployment, divorce, giants no less powerful in our life, no less large. And when we look at them, they look every bit of bi as big as Goliath did. You see, we all have giants in our life that make us feel powerless and unequipped to defeat them sit there. We stand there. We stumble back into the seat as the news comes across the phone, across a text, or delivered to us personally, and we don't know which way to turn. We look left, we look right, but all we can see is a nine foot six ugly giant standing in front of us, blocking everything else out of our vision when your giant just looks too big. David shows up, and this champion this man who was used to winning, this man who was used to dominating, and how could he not? The greatest fighter of our size against this beast of a man, how would you have a hope of defeating him? Maybe with a lucky shot, maybe with a lucky strike, but this guy who obviously had faced battles before, who had turned defeats into victories, this man was used to, to, to winning I want to talk about when your giant looks too big. Give you three thoughts about that and how to fix it. You see, when your giant looks too big, the first thought this morning, you look at your giant, and you know your giant's too big. When you look at your giant, and your giant is bigger than you are. Your giant looks too big when you look at your giant, and it looks, it appears to be bigger than you are. You say, well, pastor, listen, if you stand next to Goliath, you will see not only does it appear to be bigger, he actually is bigger than you are. You know your giant's bigger than you are, or you, you, you're looking at your giant too much when it looks bigger than you are. You look past it, and you can't see anything else. You look, and you can't see the sun. The giant blocks out the sun. And in comparison to the giant, we feel puny and weak and small and helpless and hopeless and overwhelmed. Just like all the men were, children of Israel. They heard Goliath, they saw Goliath, and they ran away like a bunch of scaredy cats. None of them wanted to face this giant. They all, if I can, stuck their head in the sand. 
They all turned tail and said, you know what, we're out of here, except one young man. And maybe in your life you've been there before or you're there right now where it seems that your giant that's in front of you, the problem that is there, the issue that is there is so big that in comparison you feel hopeless and helpless and weak and puny and discouraged and depressed and overwhelmed. And your giant looks too big. You look at your giant and it's bigger than you are. Maybe you've blocked out the sun before with your thumb. The child, hey, look at that. The whole sun is gone. It's not that my thumb is bigger than the sun. It's just that my thumb is closer to my eyes than the sun is. If I were to travel 93 million miles and put my thumb up next to the sun, what would I find out? <laughs> that my thumb was in no way the same size as the sun, besides the fact that I wouldn't survive. I know some of you smart alecks out there, oh, you couldn't make it. But my point is this, when that problem comes, becomes too close to our eyes, too close, it blocks our perspective, doesn't it? And then my small thumb, my maybe three-quarter of an inch thumb, now blocks out the size of the sun. Your giant looks too big when you look at it, and it looks bigger than you are. You know, your giant's too big. The second thought, when you look at your giant, and it scares everybody. You look at your giant and it scares everybody. There are some things that just scare certain people. Heights, spiders. There are other things that scare the living daylights out of everybody. This giant scared everybody. The so-called experts were now rookies. The so-called mighty men were now just a bunch of cream puffs. This giant, they looked at it and it scared everybody. You know your giant's too big when you look at it and everyone is scared. Sometimes in the health field, this will happen. You hear, those, you hear that word cancer and everyone is scared when your giant just looks too big. Third thought is this. You look at your giant and all you see behind the giant is a trail of defeat and casualties. No doubt the children of Israel had heard about Goliath before. Who wouldn't hear, have heard about Goliath? A guy this tall. No doubt Goliath had been in battles before. No doubt about that. He was a champion. He had won. He hadn't lost. He made, if I can, a challenge. He said, listen, you send me your strongest guy and I'll face him. Mano y mano, man to man, we'll go, you and me, whoever it is, I don't care who it is, send me your biggest guy, we'll go like this, and whoever wins, the whole country wins, the whole army wins. Goliath said, if I win, or see, he said, if you win, we will serve you, but if I win, you will serve us. I imagine that Goliath had made this challenge before. I just got a feeling, I don't know if this is true or not, I got a feeling that Goliath, for as big as he was, probably wasn't that smart. The Bible doesn't say that, I'm just reading that in there right there, okay? You know, and so I don't even think Goliath even thought of this all by himself. I think one of a, well, a short guy told him this. Some guy who was like four foot one. Hey, Goliath, I got a great idea. Say this. <laughs> okay, I'll say that. I'm not saying it's in the Bible, I'm just saying that's, I think that's how Goliath operates. He's just big and strong, but maybe, maybe up top not so much, all right. And uh, he says, oh, you serve me, I serve you, I'll beat you. And, uh, but he left a trail of casualties. He had won before. And, and uh, I imagine the Israelites, when he showed up, knew uh, what had happened before in other countries, in other, with other armies and with other cultures, that they had tried to beat Goliath. But no one had beaten Goliath in our life. We will see at times giants that seem to leave a trail of casualties, of broken homes and destroyed lives and marriages and relationships and failure and, and bondage and addiction. The giant just seemed to be too big. The giant just seemed to be too big. But I want to point out to you, 
what David did. David, David saw the same giant. David heard the same giant. David was in the same place, but David didn't run in fear, now did he? David didn't run and hide. David didn't go stick his head in the sand. If you look in 1 Samuel chapter 17, I want to bring three thoughts to you this morning. When your giant just seems to be too big or looks too big, what you need to do is you need to put your eyes back on Jesus Christ. Look, please, in 1 Samuel 17, verse verse 26, where David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killed this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? You see, David heard what Goliath said. David saw how big Goliath was, and David said, Wait a second. Hold on just a moment. I see what you see. I hear what you hear. But you're thinking about this all wrong, boys. Listen, man, you're thinking about this in the wrong way, in the wrong direction. You see that guy? He's not so tough because he is insulting my God. And David's saying, my God is tougher than that big guy over there. Listen, you're giants. When you look at God, you're going to find out that your giant is not as scary as you thought it was. David said, listen, what happens, what happens once I win? David didn't say, what happens if I lose? David said, what happens if I win? And David didn't come in and say, listen, everyone serves or just half serve? Can we make a deal, Goliath? He said, wait a second, if I win because you have defied, you have insulted God, this is what happens? You find out that the giant is not as scary as you thought it was in this account. We find out that David is going around asking this question and, and causing quite a stir. All over the place, people are like, David, why are you asking that? David, mind your own business. His brother comes. David, I know the naughtiness of thine heart. You're just trying to be a big hero. You're a nothing. You're a nobody. But that wasn't David. He said, listen, he has insulted God, and that giant is not as scary as you boys think it is. You put your eyes back on Jesus Christ. You put your eyes on God. You get the right perspective. You're going to find out at nine foot sticks, he is not as scary. That giant is not as scary as you thought it was. Now, we see this in small ways in life, sometimes with a fear of water. Fear of water can cause someone great consternation. It's a, it's a real thing. But have you ever seen someone get over that fear of water? And when they wouldn't even touch the water before, now they're splashed around like a dolphin. They find out when they experience that, that that giant that was there wasn't as scary as they thought it was. Remember a while back, we had a, a number of years back now, there was something my wife and I were praying for, a bill we had to have done. And that bill seemed to be a giant. That bill that we had to figure out and work through and pray through seemed to be nine foot six inches tall. I remember when God solved it. And he solved it just like that. And that little bill, gone, done. Now I look back, barely even think about it. Because the giant that I thought was big wasn't really that scary. Wasn't really that big. You see, when you put your eyes back on God, you find out that the giant that you thought was scary is not as scary as you thought it was. You find out that the giant was not as undefeatable as you thought it was. David is now standing before King Saul. Saul says, David, you don't have a chance. There's nothing you can do. That guy is nine foot six out there. Now Saul, as the king, he should have been out there fighting, but he wasn't. In verse 37 of 1 Samuel 17, the Bible says this, David said, Moreover, the Lord delivered me out of the paw of the lion, out of the paw of the bear. He will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. David says, God delivered me before. He can do it again. There's that great song. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. You see, David got tired of seeing the soldiers in God's great army doing nothing against this bullying brute. He knew that his God was greater and stronger and mightier than a mere man. And there was absolutely no reason for discouragement and insecurity. He said to King Saul, I'll go fight him. I'll fight him. 
And Saul said, you're just a kid. And David said, yeah, but God help me whoop a lion and whoop a bear. And the Lord's going to help me go whoop that big bully out there too. My God, the living God, will help me. I think maybe David added this in there. My God will deliver me, so let's rumble. You hear that from David? You find out when you put your eyes back on God, when you put your eyes on Jesus Christ, that that giant is not as undefeatable as he wants you to think he is. That giant... I'm going to whoop you. David said, not today. Not today. Last thought this morning. Put your eyes on God. You find out that the giant is not as big as you think it is. Verse 45. Now David and Goliath are having a conversation. Goliath says, what? You sent me a boy? You sent me a kin? You sent me this little runt out to face me? Goliath was insulted. David says in verse 45 of 1 Samuel 17, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. David said, listen here, my eyes are on God, and he's a whole lot bigger than you are, Smalls. I read that in the scripture passage, just so you know. Maybe someone said to David, David, Goliath, look how big he is. You'll never win. He's so big. And I imagine David responded back, yeah, he's so big, he's going to be hard to miss, isn't he now? You know how the story ended. David grabbed five smooth stones. Why he grabbed five, we're not sure. A lot of ideas have been presented as far as brothers or other things. But we know that David grabbed five. He threw one in that little, in that little uh, um, sling around his head. Let that rock just fly. Who guided it? God did. And David. I imagine David was pretty good with a sling. I've been a shepherd. I know my boys like to go out in the backyard with their sling sometimes and do things and shoot things. I imagine David watching the sheep had slung that sling a lot of times. But that, that time he slung it at Goliath, it was not just David. It was God involved in that rock right there. And David let that little that rock go, and that rock went pew, like an arrow right there to the forehead of Goliath. Knocked him clean out. Knocked him down. The giant wasn't as big. When God was involved, an old country preacher, an old country preacher was challenged by a highly educated agnostic man. The skeptic asked, well, why do you Christians constantly claim assurance of victory in battle? The old preacher said, well, son, in my Bible, the beginning of the Bible, it says that God was in charge when it started up. I go to the end of my Bible and I find out that God's in charge when it's all over. So I figure between the beginning of time and the end of time, God's still in charge right in the middle. In your life and in my life, there are going to be times there are giants. There are be times when the doctor calls and he says, listen, I've got some bad news for you. There will be times when the relationship takes a nosedive. Giant feels nine foot six inches tall. He's big. He's big. Come up here after church and stand next to him. He's a big guy. But my friend, my God is bigger. My God is bigger. My God can't be measured in cubits. He's over everything. My God doesn't issue challenges. He issues comfort and help. Never present help in a time of need. I wondered this morning if there's a giant in your life today. You feel overwhelmed, discouraged. That giant may be what people call a champion. It may have left a trail of casualties like Goliath. But my friend, when God gets involved, when God takes over, 
and you put your eyes on God, he makes that big old giant fit right there. Lord, I thank you for loving us. Lord, I thank you for your word. And Lord, I think of David this morning. Lord, I pray that our hearts would be encouraged. Well, I don't know all the situations that folks are facing today. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to put our eyes back on you. I wonder if you're here this morning you say, Pastor, as you spoke this morning, God was speaking to me. It's a giant in my life right now. Listen, there's no shame in that. There's going to be sometimes. I wonder if would say, Pastor, would you, would you pray for me? There's a giant in my life, and the Lord touched my heart because I've been looking at that giant, and all I see is how big he is. And he's huge. And I need to get my eyes back on Jesus Christ. I need to put my eyes on God. What if you're here this morning and say, that's me, Pastor. Would you pray for me? You just slip your hand up, amen. Hands all over, amen. It's a big giant. My eyes are right there. My eyes are right there. And God touched my heart today. I need to put my eyes back on him. But a big giant, big giant. Hands all over, who else? I wonder if you're here this morning, you never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. If you were to die today, you're not sure you'd go to heaven. Maybe that giant looks like eternity. I wonder if you say, Pastor, I don't know that I'd go to heaven, but I'd like to know today. When you pray for the others, would you pray for me? I'm not sure if I die today, I'd go to heaven. I've never trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior, but I'd like to be sure. I'd like to know that. If you'd slip your hand up, I see that. And who else? I see that hand. Amen. Who else? I'd like to be sure. I'll draw no more attention to you than I did anyone else. We'd love to help you with that today. Amen. I see that hand. The Bible says that God loves us and Jesus died for us. In just a minute, we'll stand to our feet. In just a moment. And when we do that, I encourage you, if God touched your heart, to come and pray. We'll have some men and women up here who can pray with you if you'd like someone to pray with you. But if you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, would you, would you allow us to open the Bible and show you how you can know for sure? We'd love to just take a moment and, and with the help from God's Word and His truth, settle that question of eternity. Lord, you've seen these hands this morning, or those who've indicated you touched their heart about a giant, and those who said they want to know you as their Savior. Lord, I pray that each one of us would respond the way we're supposed to to you, Lord. Strengthen and encourage. Would you help us? In Jesus' name I pray. Lord, bless this invitation. Amen.